So I'm going to do a quick training on how to use the laser cutter. Um, so there's several steps that we're going to go through. We're going to talk about the design, sending the design, and then a little bit about the laser cutter itself, setting it up, and safety around it. So the way I like to normally start is in a program called Inkscape. Now it's important to know that there are two different types of files you might be working with. One is called a raster, which means that there's actually a grid and there's different values assigned to every pixel in that grid. This is what you would typically see as like a photographic image. The other is a vector. A vector is a set of mathematical coordinates and descriptions of how lines would be connected between those coordinates. You can cut when you're using a vector and a raster, really your only option is to engrave uh, an image. So at first I'm gonna show you here a vector, so the mathematical version. I can tell it's a vector because when I zoom in, I can zoom in essentially infinitely and I don't get any pixelation. Um, and I'm going to take my design that I've done in Inkscape. I'm just gonna highlight it. I'm gonna press copy and I'm gonna go over to Corel Draw. The reason I'm going to CorelDRAW is it is the only program that the printer talks to directly. So we're going to copy our design over. Just prior, I had gone in and I'd gone to open. And although you don't necessarily have to take the steps, it makes it easier just to place things. I had gone into our file directory where I went into Dropbox under my documents, member resources and projects, and then Epilogue Laser. I chose the cutting tray template and I opened it. I'll go ahead and just reopen it, I guess. So I got this, which shows me what the cutting area I have is. Now I'm just gonna press copy paste. I get my object and I can place it. Uh, in this case, you know, sometimes you'd place in this corner. I'm placing in this corner because uh, at moment the laser needs to be recalibrated and it's stronger on this side. Um, so we have my object and I'm going to highlight it and there's a trick, this trips people up a lot. In order for the laser cutter to know it's an exact line to follow, not something to be painted as a raster, it needs to be a hairline. And that's here under the pen tool and then hairline. So it's a good practice just to go and do that even if you already think your uh, object is set as a hairline. Uh, now I'm going to get the printer ready. So what I'm going to do is going to go File, and then Print. It's automatically defaulted to another printer. You can ignore this essentially. This is one of the other printers. What I want to do is select the printer driver, which is the Radius Engraver Win32. Once I've selected that, I can hit Properties, and you're going to see a selection of options. Now, had I brought over a bitmap, something that wasn't a vector image, I would be interested in these raster options and I would set the quality. Uh, if the number is higher, that's gonna be a higher quality image. It'll also come through darker and it will take longer to print. Uh, I'm actually gonna be doing a vector. And so I don't think this, uh, that print quality impacts it. Um, underneath here, if I was in raster, I'd use these options. They're very similar to the options that I'm gonna be showing you. So I think the what you learn here will apply. Um, you can see there's several settings. Vector sorting is just the order in which it's going to draw all of the pieces. Leave that to yes, but you can change it to no if you want. Uh, rate automatic, that would be allowing the machine to set the rate at which the laser pulses. You can leave it to no, you could change it to yes, you can experiment a little bit. You can see the rate is set down here. The two that you're gonna be playing with the most are speed and power and uh, it can be a little tricky. You want it to be uh, fast enough that your job gets done in a reasonable amount of time, but slow enough that it actually burns without starting a fire. If you're too slow, you'll notice charring and burning on your piece. Uh, and then power is obviously the percentage of the total power. So for testing purposes, a 50-50 on a piece of cardboard, which I normally do a piece of cardboard for doing something bigger, uh, is a good starting point. Uh, just to fill you in what the last part is here, this is a bit of an advanced feature, but if you were to want to cut multiple uh, different levels of power on the same piece in the same print, you could say yes.
and then you could actually assign different colors different values. So in this case, I've assigned black a speed of 40%, a power of 100%, and red as a lesser. Of course, the colors have to be exact, red, green, blue, colors matching this in your drawing as the power settings are assigned. So now that we have uh, all of this set up, I'm just going to go look at a few more options here. The computer control speed and power, that's fine. It's going to send the settings to the computer. And this is an important one. Autofocus is no. It should be defaulted to no, but the autofocus on this laser cutter is currently not working. And so we're going to set the focus manually. It's not working in such a way that if it's on, you'll see the bed lower and raise and it may well jam into the, to the laser cutter head. So if you see it autofocusing, you want to turn the laser cutter off right away. Let's go over and take a look at the laser cutter itself. So before we even get uh, started with the operation of the laser cutter, I want to point out a couple of things. Uh, one is that we have a fire extinguisher right here at the side hanging on the laser cutter. This is a particular type of fire extinguisher. It's a CO2 fire extinguisher, which means that if you use it, it's not going to spray a bunch of extra chemicals, which may damage the internals of the uh, system. You are cutting with light, uh, so you should expect that uh, fire is a, a high risk. Um, you can be careful about what materials and what powers you use, but ultimately, you just need to be uh, vigilant and prepared to respond if necessary. So just think about your piece and think about how you would smother or put that out without going to a fire extinguisher first. You know, a lot of flames you can prevent just by turning it off and stopping the uh, laser from cutting in that particularly thin spot or where it's, where it's charring. Uh, if you feel you need to, you can always move to this. And then after that on the wall, there's a chemical uh, sprayer and of course there is the uh, fire alarm system which is there as well. Um, you want to appropriately escalate what your response is according to how much of a uh, of fire there is. The other thing is you should never leave the laser cutter alone. There should always be somebody uh, monitoring it who knows you're monitoring it since it is a uh, fire risk. Um, so let's talk about the machine itself real quick. Uh, inside here, what you have is a, if you see in the back there, there's a little hole. That's where the laser comes out. It hits this mirror. It's deflected down towards this, this mirror down, and into this lens here. Um, this lens needs to be periodically cleaned and, uh, you know, monitored for accumulation of gunk and junk. Uh, you want to be attentive to what sort of stuff you're printing because some things will either produce dangerous gases like chlorine gas and so we're not allowed to print it on the printer or it will create residues that would collect on that lens and if residues collect on the lens enough the uh, when the laser hits the gunk on the lens it will heat up create an uneven heat distribution and potentially shatter or damage the lens so those are all things we uh, want to prevent as well as it would decrease your print quality um, so I have turned the laser cutter on down here. This is also where you would want to turn it off if you see something going wrong or if you see that the autofocus has been left on and it's going to ram itself into the, to the head. Uh, I'm about to print, so I'm going to go turn on the fan in the back. It's a switch right behind this door. And that exhausts to outside. Uh, now we're pretty much ready to press print. I'm going to run over the computer. Say OK to all our settings and then OK to print. Now when we come back here, I could have put my material in earlier, but I'll put my material here, so put it in the top corner. And I actually want to focus it. I could have also done this earlier. So on top of the material, what you want to do is you pay attention, there's a little nub here, and I'm going to, I don't know if it can focus, you can see, yeah, there's a little nub. Use that nub as essentially a feeler. So if you want to film this little panel over here, I'm going to click the focus button, and then I turn this dial, and that will move the uh, bed. So if you get, you can get right in there actually, hopefully 
and I'm going to bring it up. So, and when it just pops out a little, there it goes. Now it's focused. So, I have my piece here. I'm going to close it. It's all ready to go on the printer. It's lined up, so I just now click online. This button sticks, so sometimes you have to pop it up and you have to press it firmly. But when I push it, when I push it, okay, good example of, there it goes. And we are cutting. A little bit of flame is okay, as you see here. Though if you see a persistent flame burning, you're gonna wanna make sure you turn down the power. That's the basic overview of the laser cutter.